Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is 3.5 Dividing Polynomials. So let's talk about long division before we talk about dividing polynomials because we're actually going to use long division. You're probably thinking, Ms. Ma, I haven't done long division for a really long time and I don't want to. Well, too bad you have to do it, so listen up. Okay, so 37 is the dividend and 5 is the divisor. You don't really have to know these terms, but it's good to know. The dividend goes on the inside and the divisor goes on the outside. So we're going to take the 5 and we're going to try to put it into 3. We cannot because 3 is smaller than 5. So now we'll put it into 37. Um, 5 goes into 37 7 times. 7 times 5 is 35. So we write 35 right there. And we subtract them off. We get 2. And then we're done because we know we don't have any numbers left here, so we can just write remainder 2 because we're actually not looking for the um, decimals. So 35, just a reminder, let's drive it home. 35 is 5 times 7, and that's where I got it. I took this number and I multiplied it by this number, and that's how I got them. Okay, this is really, really important, and you'll see why when we get to the polynomials. Okay, so let's do this longer one. I just want to make sure you guys know how to do the long division on a longer question. So you put the dividend on the inside and the divisor on the outside. 4 doesn't go into 1, but it goes into 10. So it goes in 2 times. 4 times 2 is 8. You subtract them off, and you'll get 2. Then we bring this 7 down only the 7, and we'll deal with this 27 right here. 4 goes into 27 6 times. Uh, we don't want it to go into it 5 times, because if we were 5, 5 times 4 is 20, and then when we subtracted that, we'd get 7. 7 is bigger than 4, that's a problem. We always want it to be less than 4, so we have to get as close to 27 as possible, which is why we're choosing 6. So multiply 6 times 4 is 24, subtract, and so forth. So I'm just going to continue moving the numbers down one at a time and subtracting off what I can. And I move the zero down. Don't forget about zeros because they're really important. And I know that 5 times 4 is 20, so when I subtract this off I get zero. And the temptation for a lot of people is to just leave it as is, but you still have these two numbers here, so we can't stop yet. We've got to keep on going and keep subtracting until we get to the end. And if you don't want to draw these arrows, you don't have to, but I'm just drawing it for you. And we just write it in like this. And so we get 3 at the end, and because there is no there are no more numbers, we're done. So this must be remainder 3. And that's it, okay? So don't forget that you need to keep on going one number at a time until you get to the end. And this last one, I just wanted to show you a short one to remind you of a term. So 4 goes into 8 two times, so you can uh, put it right there, right away. Um, and we just subtract it off and keep going until we get to the end. I'm not going to really belabor the point, but you know how to do it. And if you don't remember, maybe you should practice a little bit. And at the end, I am multiplying by zero, so don't forget to put the zero at the end. So this ends up with a remainder of zero, and I just wanted to remind you guys that remainder zero means um, actually that 4 times 2140 is equal to 8560. And so that tells us that 8560 is a multiple of 4. And it also tells us that 4 and 2140 are both factors of 8560. And that's really important to know. The other thing is that if you look at 5 t if you look at 37 and you wanted to construct it from 5 times 7, it's actually 5 times 7 plus 2. So this is the dividend. The dividend is equal to the divisor times the quotient, 7 is called the quotient, plus the remainder. Okay? And so that's how we would find those answers. This is not something that you need to memorize necessarily, but you do have to remember that we could multiply these two things together and add this to get the, to get the original thing we're dividing. Okay? 
Another way to write this is, well, if you think about 37 divided by 5, we know the divide sign is really just another way of saying fractions. You can see it's a fraction sign. So 37 over 5 is the same thing, which means that 7 plus 2 over 5 is 37 over 5. So if I wanted to write it as fractions, I can do it in this way where I've got that mixed number. So if let's do some practice on polynomials. Again, I'm going to take the divisor and I'm going to put it on the inside. And the method is exactly the same as with the numbers, except that I'm only going to concentrate on the first terms. So I'm going to look at x, this x term, and I'm going to look at this 3x cubed. And those are the only things I'm going to worry about for now. So I have to ask myself, what times x is equal to 3x cubed? What times x is 3x cubed? And the answer is 3x squared, so I'm going to li line it up with this x squared, and I write 3x squared. So just like with this one, you can see 35 is 5 times 7. So right here, I'm going to write x minus 3 times 3x squared, and that's what's going to go underneath the next line. So 3x squared times x is 3x cubed. 3x squared times negative 3 is negative 9x squared. And again, just like before, I'm subtracting off the answer. So I need to subtract both of these terms. So make sure that you change this sign into a plus. So negative 5x squared minus negative 9x squared. That gives me 4x squared. And 3x cubed minus 3x cubed gives me 0. And that's exactly what I want. I want to get a 0 here so that I can move on with my life. So Again, just like the numbers, I'm going to take the next term and I'm going to move it down. So I put a negative 7x here. And I'm going to, again, concentrate on this 4x squared and this x. So x times what is 4x squared? The answer is 4x. And I'm going to multiply 4x times x minus 3. I get 4x squared minus 12x. And again, I'm subtracting both of those terms from this section. So 4x squared minus 4x squared is 0, negative 7x minus negative 12, 5x. Bring the negative 1 down. And so now we've hit our last term, and I just have to think about this 5x and this x again. So 5x is x times 5, and I'm just going to do 5 times x minus 3, which is 5x minus 15. Don't forget, you are subtracting. So this is negative 1 plus 15, the remainder is 14. Okay? Now, with the next question, what I'd like you to do is pause the video and try it on your own. If you're not sure how to do it still, you can rewatch this section or you can watch example B. We're going to have a few more examples before the end of the lesson. So please try to do it on your own before you move on. Okay, example B. So set it up on your own and then I'm going to do it as well. So here we go, negative 5x to the 4 plus 2x cubed plus x squared minus 3x minus 4. And we're again just going to concentrate on the beginning. So x times negative 5x cubed is negative 5x to the 4. So I just multiply this term by negative 5x cubed and it gives me negative 5x to the 4 t plus 10x cubed. Subtract them off and you get negative 8x cubed here. So I will bring that x squared down. And you don't have to draw the arrows. I'm going to stop drawing them soon. Um, and we're going to subtract off 8x squared. So we'll subtract that from there. Multiply. We get 16x squared here. And subtract again. I'm going to get negative 15x squared bring the number down and continue. So negative 15x and we'll multiply both terms and subtract again. Bring the negative 4 down and we can see it's going to be plus minus 33 and then we just multiply one more time, subtract one more time, and we get our remainder, remainder negative 70.
So we could write our answer like this, negative 5x cubed minus 8x squared minus 15x minus 33, remainder negative 70. Or another way that we could write it is we can say negative 5x cubed minus 8x squared minus 15x minus 33 plus negative 70 over x minus 2. Just like we did, I'm going to go back, we did that right here where we're dividing and we get plus this number, so that's exactly the same thing that we've written. We're just writing it in a mixed number format. Okay, so again, you could try pausing and then doing it. Um, you'll notice that in the bottom I could factor it, but actually it's going to be easier for us if we don't. So you can try doing this on your own um, and then unpause and come back to me. Okay, so hopefully what you did was you put this in standard form. It does need to be in standard form. That's really important for both the top and the bottom, the quotient, or sorry, the dividend and the divisor. So I'm going to write them into the dividing thing <laughs> in standard form. And something that you'll notice here is actually that I don't have an x squared and that's actually a really important step to have. So I'm actually going to add an x squared term in here and it's 0 times x squared because there is no x squared there. It's just hidden. So this is a secret ninja 0 to help us because we really really need to have that term in there. And actually to remind you I'm just going to draw a ninja in here. So the ninja 0 is your friend and he's going to help you out with this question. So just like before, I'm taking the x squared and the x to the 4, and I'm just saying, what do I need to multiply x squared by to get x to the 4? And the answer is x squared. So I'm going to line it up with my x squared there and multiply everything by x squared. So I get x to the 4 plus 2x cubed plus x squared. And like before, we're subtracting. So be really careful when you subtract that you actually are subtracting otherwise you're going to get the wrong answer and we bring the 5x down and then again we're going to concentrate on this and this and to get the answer so minus 4x and we multiply by all of the terms and subtract them so I get 7x squared plus 9x and I bring that plus 3 down and so now you can see I've got my last term because x squared and x squared are the same degree so I just multiply by 7 so I get 7x squared plus 14x plus 7 over negative 5x minus 4 and that is going to be our remainder so the remainder is negative 5x minus 4 okay and that's how we do it. Okay, we have two more examples, so I'm going to breeze right through them really quickly um, and not talk too much about them. Um, so if you, again, want to uh, pause the video and do the questions and then just skip through until you get to the answer, that is okay with me. Don't forget to add your ninjas in here. We've got two ninjas this time and be in standard form. We want to know if it's a factor of x of negative 2x cubed plus x to the 4 plus 6 and how we're going to do that is we're going to figure out what the remainder is. If the remainder is 0 then it is a factor. We talked about that in the very beginning. So we're going to just divide away um, and you know I don't know if I need to really explain too much anymore. Hopefully you have mastered this part of the dividing um, and you feel really confident. Uh, the more you practice it, the better off you are. So it's really important that you spend time to try it out on your own um, or when we get to class you'll be able to do that as well. So just, you know, get as much practice as possible in as you can. It makes you really fast and you can see I'm just talking over it as I go. Um, and that's because, you know, I've done this so many times. Hopefully I'm not making any errors, but um, I get remainder is 38. And that is certainly not zero. 
So it is not a factor. Um, actually, I'm going to write x plus 2 is not a factor. x plus 2 is not a factor. Okay, next question. Last question. So this says that 2x plus 3 is a factor. I want to determine the other factors and sketch a graph. So now I'm getting into factored form, which we've been practicing um, in our other class. So we'll write 2x plus 3, and we're going to divide. When we divide, we're actually going to get a quadratic. And I know this because when I divide, I'm going to get this degree minus this degree answer. So this is a degree 3, and I'm dividing by a degree 1. So the answer, the quotient, will be a degree 2. OK, 3 minus 1, which is 2. So that's how I do it. So with this one, again, you might want to pause and just do this on your own. 2x, and we're going to worry about how to get 2x into 6x cubed. So now this is a, even a little bit different. So 2x times 3x squared is 6x cubed, so that's what we need to go for, 3x squared, like this, and we'll multiply both by 3x squared, and we get 9x squared here, and again, we're subtracting, don't forget that you need to subtract, that's really important, 2x times negative 2 um, to get to negative 4x squared, so we're again just multiplying this by that number, minus 6 whoops, 6x, and we're subtracting, so we'll get negative 10x minus 15, and subtract, and we ho we're hoping for a remainder of 0, because it says it's a factor, and you can see that I do get a remainder of 0, which is good. So now I know that the original, the original number, um, 6x cubed, plus 5x squared minus 16x minus 15 is equal to 2x plus 3 times um, our quotient here, 3x squared minus 2x minus 5. 3x squared minus 2x minus 5. And we're going to factor this quadratic. You could use the quadratic formula. Um, however, you know, you should be able to do it without it. And then I get 2x plus 3 times 3x minus 5 times x plus 1. And that's it, the polynomial in factored form. And I'm going to use this information to sketch the graph. So we will draw our axes in. And so hopefully you remember how to graph. You need to know what the zeros are. So x equals negative 3 over 2, x equals 5 over 3, and x equals negative 1. They all have order 1. And we have, you can see a sub n is equal to 6, uh, which is the leading coefficient, and it is positive. And our degree is 3, so the end behaviors are going to start in the bottom and then work their way to the top. So write these in in order, negative 3 over 2 negative 1, just trying to avoid getting too mixed up with my numbers, and then 5 over 3 is somewhere over here, so that my graph doesn't overlap my numbers. And I also can see that negative 15 is going to be my uh, y-intercept, so I'm going to go through here, up, down, trying to be symmetrical, and then back up, through 5 over 3, and this point right here is going to be negative 15, and just draw your arrows, and your x, and your y, and we will label it 6x cubed plus 5x squared minus 16x minus 15. And there you go. We have not only divided, but we've actually factored the whole thing and then been able to sketch it very accurately. So that is all. Uh, basically, we learned today how to divide polynomials, and you need lots of practice. So thanks for watching, and go home and do it.